everybody, we're going to go over the function run for the interface. And you've got another one, which is an execute function. And this is different because you would put a block of code you want to be run over and over again to reduce nodes. So that's what that one would be for. We're not going to cover that one. We're going to cover the function run. So this way you can have just one panel instead of two panels if you prefer that. So currently I am remaking the Lightmagic Studio and I'm coming out with version 6, which is going to be very compact and very uh, very powerful, very useful. It's going to have some interesting features like my uh, snap light, which you'll be able to do some stuff. I'm not going to get into it right now. I'll be able to do some stuff. It'll give you some very cool light options. So right now, if you were to collapse this menu, you still got this uh, little pop-up here. I don't really like that. It's how some of my previous add-ons have been. So in order to compact them down just a little bit, instead of having all of this, I'll go ahead and delete that other panel and delete these buttons right here because I don't want them. I want one simple panel and then maybe a pop-up and a pie menu just to keep the add-on very small. So let's look at the use case. Over here in the snap lights node graph, I've got my function interface right here. Okay. And this is going to allow me to have a separate node graph so it's not all bundled up and not confusing to keep your workflow nice and clean. And it just ties in over here on the main. And so I've got snap lights, the function interface here. So let's go ahead and create one. All right, now it's important to note that when I hit shift a S and type in function that I get the interface and then this doesn't connect. This is for the other node graph. So it just kind of comes in this way. So you hit the little uh, eyeglass and click add node. And this one you can actually just delete. We're not going to need it. You can delete all this stuff out of there and go ahead and connect it. And then we're going to want to go over and create a corresponding node graph for this so that way we don't have multiple panels. I'll click the plus symbol here for the add node tree. can rename this to clean underscore workspace. And now with that selected, I can just type in function. And I just want you to think about this like it's a panel. So that's the way I'm just minimize this. That's the way you want to look at it. So now if I shift a S and put in say uh, display property right here, I'm going to go ahead and save because sometimes this will crash. The function interface will do that sometimes. I'm using Blender 3.6.1 as well. So I'm going to go back over to the main and I want to pick up clean workspace. And then I'll go ahead and just grab that function interface. And sometimes I rename both sides. You can do that if you want. And I'll switch back over to clean workspace and we'll see, voila, no property connected, which is perfect. Uh, I want to go to the add. I mean, I have to go shift A actually. Let's just do something really simple. And I'm going to right click on any one of these mesh objects here. I'm going to do the Suzanne. It doesn't matter. And I want to click to get serpents operator and then shift V. I can go ahead and drop in a button. And just for the sake of it, I'll go ahead and put these buttons, the display property and the button on a row. And so I'll have a button and then I'll have the property. And I can align those to make them line up nicely. And then for this particular property here, I'm just going to grab something like from the object menu here to make it visible in the renders or not. And so I'm going to go through the blend data browser for that. I'm going to go to data. Let's pull this bad boy out and I'll go down to objects, main objects. You can see I already did this and I'm going to just drag the plane out and expand that. Then I click on the little search bar here 
And when I do that, I can just type in view because the data browser will take things that are off in these menus and then certain things that are in context, like active objects and stuff, you'd want to go to context view. And what we can do is just grab the Boolean because that's what I want to show is a Boolean and we'll make that the display property. Shift V, drop it in, switch the object down here. So it's not referencing the plane anymore. I don't want that. I want it to reference an active object, whatever is selected. And when I do that, I'll now have the little is viewport and the icon should pop up by itself. If you want to separate that little bit, you can turn off the align just to make it more accentuated. And so this is how you would actually go about doing this. So you don't have all that extra menu stuff going on. And I actually want all of my buttons on the right side, not on the left, like to kind of follow how this is going with the format. So what I'll do is I'm just gonna go ahead and plug in my button here and I'll just shift all these over. And then just tag that in. And now the button's over here and I do like them aligned. And just so maybe you can show it in a way that makes it look a little bit better and a little more separated, shift a S type in box and grab a box. And when you do that, um, it'll isolate it just a little bit more and you can actually couple, throw a couple of them in there. So I could throw two boxes in just really, Hey man, this is really a cool function down here. Grab this and use it. And I'm just going to save that cause I might actually uh, do something with this, but once that's done, I'm going to go back over to the main and just kind of reiterate this function run is calling clean workspace. It's not calling main. So you have to cut that out and then this will automatically pop up. So whatever's in that node graph, if there's a function there. That's what's going to pop up for you. So back over here in the clean workspace, I can go back to the button and say, amazing stuff here you know you can click that and have something happen like the suzanne pop in i just add a monkey uh, you can change the a line to the cursor whatever you want so if i move the cursor here i got amazing stuff and it's just gonna suzanne's are just gonna pop in everywhere and then i can individually select each one and make them go away just a little bit right so that's it and one more quick tip once you've got your function interface set up, treat it like a panel and hit control J, press N for the end panel, come up to node, and then you can click color and change to something nice and bright so you can see it. You can also put in a text label and say whatever you want, right up here, not down there. And we'll just say this is our new function and you can change the label size to make that just a little bit bigger. And so now as you're zoomed out, uh, you'll be able to see where that is very easy. As for the run function interface tutorial for you guys, just to kind of upgrade your workflows. Appreciate you watching. Smash that subscribe, smash that like, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.